It's a very exciting time for budget PC gamers because we now have current gen graphics cards from both Nvidia and AMD at or below $300. Well, it should be exciting anyway. Let's see if that's the case by the end of this video. Nvidia's lowest price entry to the RTX 4000 series is here, the $300 RTX 4060. This segment of the market is very competitive right now. AMD's already tossed their current gen entry into the hat. They beat Nvidia to the punch uh, with their RX 7600. And we've got a handful of cards from last generation from both companies that have seen price reductions slotting them around this price range. And oh yeah, there's Intel too. They have cards around this price, but I didn't get a chance to check them out for this video, unfortunately. I'll need to include them in a follow-up head-to-head. But in this video, we're gonna take a look at the performance of this alongside a few other comparable cards and hopefully help you decide if it's worth your hard-earned money or not. Okay, let's first jump into discussing the cards that I tested. So of course, we have the RTX 4060 here. This is the ASUS Dual C, which is one of the more entry-level models that is supposed to be available at $300. Uh, we're gonna have to wait and see if that holds true or not once they hit retailers. Uh, and as mentioned, AMD's competitor to this is their RX 7600. Uh, so I also tested this as well. This card is interesting because it was meant to release at $300, similar to this, but AMD cut its price last minute to $270, and then they cut it again leading up to the 4060, and now it's down to $250. So it's not as close in price to the 4060 anymore, but it's AMD's closest current gen card that they have. They continue to have this huge gap in their product stack, which I still find pretty mind boggling. If or when the 7600 XT comes out, it may be closer in price to the 4060, uh, but for now, the 7600 is all we've got. Now, someone with around $300 might consider a last generation card because one, they are still very relevant. PC hardware doesn't just go obsolete after only one generation. Uh, but two, last gen cards are now cheaper, making them more competitive, like I said earlier in the video. So from those, I chose one Nvidia and one AMD card. For last gen team green, I went with uh, this uh, RTX 3060 12 gigabyte. This is around $280 right now and is a little closer in price to the 4060 uh, than the 3060 Ti is, so that's why I chose it. With this, we'll get to see the gen to gen uplift, but also it has 12 gigabytes of VRAM, so for the people who get up in arms around video memory, uh, it'll be interesting to see how it compares to the 8 gigabytes in the 4060. For last gen team red, I debated between the RX 6650 XT and the 6700 XT, but I eventually decided on the 6700. 700 XT here. Even though it is a little bit over $300, I've been seeing it for around $320 on places like Newegg, uh, but it is the one that is closer in price to the 4060. This also has 12 gigabytes of VRAM. Here are the key specs to these cards. Feel free to pause the screen if you want to look through them more thoroughly, but compared to the 3060, the 4060 looks a little bit cut down, doesn't it? Very similar to what we saw between the 4060 Ti and the 3060 Ti. Core counts, memory capacity, memory bus, PCIe lanes, etc. The specs are really interesting to see side by side and all, but I personally prefer to let the performance do the talking, so let's move on. Details of my test system are shown on the screen. Uh, I tested mainly at 1080p because I only had so much time, uh, but I did it at max settings on all the games, which you'll see uh, when it does push that VRAM usage indicated by when either of these two 12 gigabyte cards push over eight gigabytes. With cards at this price and tier, you know, I think the realistic expectation for them is to either max out 1080p gaming or run at medium to high-ish 1440p if you're just talking about raw raster performance, especially on current titles. These aren't really capable of running 1440p, you know, max out or ultra settings. So that's why I chose 1080p max. I did, however, test a couple of VRAM demanding titles at 1440p though, uh, as well as looked at ray tracing and frame generation uh, performance, but I didn't have time to do that for every single title uh, for every single card. That's just way too big of a test matrix, especially since I'm like a one man team. Uh, and I don't just show charts. I actually show side by side game capture. Uh, so yeah. The main focus of this is going to be on raw performance, uh, raw raster performance though, since that's what the community has been most vocal about with this current generation of cards. So let's get to it. We'll first start off with Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Whenever I show percentage differences on the screen, it will all be relative to the RTX 4060, which is on your far left. To the right of that is the RTX 3060 12 gigabyte. To the right of that is the RX 7600. And then finally on your far right is the RX 6700 XT. Here we see the 6700 XT take the win with a 10% lead over the 4060. The 3060 and 7600 pretty much tie with each other. And I was actually surprised to see the 7600 do so poorly on this given that this is an AMD sponsored title. Generally AMD cards do much better. I would have thought that it would be a lot closer to the 4060, but that simply wasn't the case. 
Next up is Apex Legends, and again, the 6700 XT takes the win, though this time by a slimmer margin. Frames per dollar here, the RTX 4060 is about on par with the 6700 XT, since the difference in both price and performance is roughly 6% here. Here, the RX 7600 catches up, showing itself to be a more attractive option than the 4060 given the $50 price difference. The RTX 3060 12GB comes in dead last. That additional VRAM alone hasn't made a difference yet. In Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, we continue to see the trend of the 6700 XT taking a win, though this time the RX 7600 actually comes surprisingly in close second, a pretty big win for the now $250 card. The RTX 3060 comes in dead last. We can even see that it's making good use of the extra VRAM, as both it and the 6700 XT are operating in the 10GB territory, though it doesn't help it enough to make a meaningful difference here. Moving on to Cyberpunk, the 6700 XT continues to collect W's, though by single digit margins once again, and it's linear to how much more expensive it is over the RTX 4060 here. The 7600 manages to tie the 4060, and the 3060 12GB comes in last once again. This is just a pure rasterization test right now, we'll revisit Cyberpunk later on in the video to check out ray tracing and frame generation. Diablo 4 is the current game that I'm sinking the most of my time into right now, so I enjoy every minute of testing it since I get chances at finding gear upgrades while doing so. Here the 6700 XT widens the gap in performance to 16% over the 4060, the 7600 is 10% worse in comparison, and again the RX 3060 is in dead last. You can see in the footage that it is indeed utilizing more of its VRAM, but as we've been seeing, having extra VRAM when you don't have the rest of the package to back it up does not always result in better performance. In Forza Horizon 5, the 6700 leads by 8% over the 4060, and the 7600 and 3060 are tied, both 19% slower than the 4060. Next up is Halo Infinite, and the 4060 is actually neck and neck with the 6700 XT here, which could be considered a victory for it given the price difference between the two cards, as well as how much lower the power draw is. And oh yeah, I forgot to mention when we started, but ignore the 6700 XT power draw that I was measuring on the footage here. It's completely off. I'm not sure why Afterburner and Hardware Info did not have the accurate data for the total board power, specifically for the 6700 XT only. For the Nvidia cards and for the RX 7600, it was just fine. But speaking of the 7600, is making a good case for itself here, coming within single digit percentage differences while noticeably at lower costs. In Hogwarts Legacy, the 6700 XT leads the 4060 by 13%, and both the 3060 and 7600 are within single digit percentage of it as well. This is the most narrow spread that we've seen so far between all four cards. Not really a good look for the 4060 to come so close in performance with the predecessor it's replacing. The Last of Us Part 1 was known to give 8GB graphics cards issues at launch, but patches have come out since its release to further optimize the game. At Ultra Settings, we do see cards surpass 8GB of VRAM usage if they have it, but for the cards that don't have the extra VRAM, I would say these results are still very playable. The 6700 XT leads the 4060 here by 16%, and the 3060 and 7600 are pretty much tied with one another. We're going to visit The Last of Us later on in the video, specifically at 1440p because this was such a problematic title with regards to video memory. In Spider-Man Miles Morales, the 4060 finally gets its first win over the 6700 XT. While it's not a huge lead, it's a lead nonetheless. The RX 7600, despite being 10% slower, still offers better value proposition given that it costs 17% less. Alright, so while I didn't have enough time to test all the games again at 1440p, I did test the ones that I knew were going to be VRAM sensitive from previously testing the 4060 Ti. Diablo 4 is one of those titles, and as you can see here, the RX 6700 XT is closely approaching its 12GB limit. The performance gap between it and the 4060 just barely widens a bit. Remember earlier, the 6700 XT led by 16%, so it's not a huge and drastic change here. It is worth noting though that earlier we saw the 7600 have a slight lead over the 12GB 3060, but now that lead is gone. So the extra VRAM does seem to help it out here, but not significantly enough to surpass the 4060 performance. With all that said though, all these cards gave very playable experiences. So now let's take a look back at The Last of Us again at 1440p. Based on what I saw in my 4060 Ti review, at 1440p 8GB cards struggle, especially at ultra settings. Here, while all four results could be considered playable, the lead that the 6700 XT has goes from the 16% seen earlier in 1080p now to a whopping 28%. The RTX 3060 also closes the gap between it and the 4060 to within a couple of FPS, so this is a testament to the VRAM making a noticeable difference. It doesn't do it for all titles as we saw earlier, but in this one it definitely does. Alright, now let's take a look at ray tracing, which I personally don't ever turn on at all. You know, there's an argument that, oh, you could turn on DLSS or FSR or frame generation or whatever to alleviate it, 
but I would rather just turn those things on and leave ray tracing off and still have like, you know, very high or ultra settings, which I think still looks very good and have better performance than if ray tracing was ticked on. So yeah, that's just me though. Uh, I'm very curious how many of you out there actually play with ray tracing on. Um, and yeah, we have to take a look at it and talk about it though, at least a little bit. Otherwise the fanboys are gonna get mad at me. Cyberpunk is like the staple ray tracing tech demo. So of course I had to check it out. Here we see the same tale time and time again, Nvidia just completely dominates AMD and the RX 7600 is laughably bad here. Do note that I did max out the ray tracing settings and Cyberpunk by default always throws on resolution scaling, so the cards are running the respective DLSS and FSR which I set to balance mode. Testing another title with ray tracing, we've got Spider-Man where I maxed out the ray tracing settings here again. Here we see the same 23% performance gap between the 4060 and the 6700 XT. We again see the 7600 have piss poor performance. Just look at how choppy that footage is. AMD apparently still has a lot of catching up to do with ray tracing. This is their second generation now. What is the excuse for this to have this big of a performance difference to the Nvidia cards? Next up, we're gonna take a look at frame generation, which is a feature that I feel that the community is still pretty split on. Here we have Cyberpunk with only frame generation turned on, no upscaling. This is one of the few games that does allow enabling frame generation without super resolution. I just wanted to point that out because this is the only test where we can do this at. The next two that we test after this, you have to try on DLSS to do so. So looking at this here, the 4060 is the only card with this feature. We saw a tie earlier with the 7600 and it actually lost to the 6700 XT, but of course now with it turned on, it just completely dominates them. I think for a game like Cyberpunk, it's perfectly fine. Diablo 4 also supports frame generation, so let's take a look at it here. To enable it, we do have to enable DLSS resolution scaling. So to make it fair for all the other cards, I also enable them too with FSR for the MD cards. Doing that, the 4060 does pull away from both the 3060 and 7600 compared to the true 1440p results. And it does start to encroach on the 6700 XT, but alas, it still falls short. The last title I checked out frame generation on was Hogwarts Legacy, which again, we do need to enable DLSS resolution scaling first uh, before we have access to it. So doing that, the 4060 manages to come out with the victory over the 6700 XT, which was earlier leading it by 13%, but now it comes in at 6% slower. So yeah, it just depends on the games that you're playing. In some titles, uh, enabling it will get you far more gains than in others. Like there, that was a pretty big difference between Hogwarts Legacy and Diablo 4. Now I did do a couple of quick productivity tests for those handful of viewers out there that do care about these types of results. First up is Blender, which is not relevant to me at all, but I know there's a number of people in my community that use Blender. Uh, Nvidia has traditionally stomped AMD in this category and it's no different here. Depending on the scene, the 4060 can compute two to three times more samples per minute compared to the AMD cards. It even has a pretty decent gen to gen performance uplift compared to the 3060. It's pretty clear here that if you care about Blender at all, then AMD is just simply not an option. Next up is Premiere Pro using Puget Bench. The following scores are representative of how each card handled an overload of GPU specific accelerated effects. The higher the score, the better. Puget Bench updated their benchmark last month and changed the methodologies. And after reading the updated documentation, I don't completely grasp these, you know, like what the numbers mean. So if I'm being completely honest, I mostly ran these just for reference for those of you out there who do care to take a look at these numbers, but I can't speak much more on them. All right, conclusion time. So do I think the RTX 4060 is worth Nvidia's asking price of $300? This is a tricky one and I don't think I can answer it definitively, but I can help break it down so that it's easier for you yourself to answer this question. So we'll start this exercise off by considering the very, very popular bang for buck option right now in this price range, the RX 6700 XT. I have been recommending this for the longest time now compared to like the RTX 3000 series cards. And given the price reduction recently to around $320, I've been seeing it recommended even more now than ever by my peers, by the comment sections of YouTube videos, by Reddit threads, etc. I think the 6700 XT is pretty universally praised at the moment. So if we use this as a reference for what is considered, you know, like, good value, then we can try to scale what the 4060 should be priced relative to it based on its performance. I know I didn't do a ton of 1440p tests, but based on the 1080p ultra results that I did have and those couple of 1440p runs that I did do, I'd say the 4060 is about 15% slower than the 6700 XT uh, on average in raster. Uh, and remember, this already accounts for the eight gigabytes of VRAM that it has in the card. Like that's baked into the performance numbers. So, you know, we're already 
considering that and it's 15% slower as a result. So if the 6700 XT is considered good value at $320, then by that logic, the 4060 at 15% less than $320 should also be considered good value, right? Uh, and that works out to be about $270. 15% off of $320 is $270. So if all you care about is raster performance, just pure rasterization, uh, not any of the other features, then no, the RTX 4060 is not worth $300. It is $30 overpriced. But wait, there's more. How much do you value the other things that Nvidia is packaging with this card though? Because we can't just ignore them if we're gonna be fair about it. Is the noticeably lower power draw worth anything to you? The difference between the 4060 and 6700 XT is roughly 100 watts. For me here in the Pacific Northwest, electricity is pretty dirt cheap. We've got great hydro infrastructure. So it's 12 cents per kilowatt hour. Uh, I think we're actually the cheapest in the US. So let's just assume I gain three hours on average every evening, or that works out to be 21 hours a week. So that works out to be about $13 a year. That's not super crazy savings. To make up that $30 that you're overspending based on those numbers, it'll take a little over two years time. Now, this of course is gonna vary from person to person, so you're just gonna have to calculate yourself based on where you live to see if it's significant and based on how much you know video games or high power usage of a graphics card that you use. But pushing the power savings to the side, the 4060 does have superior ray tracing performance. There's no denying it. We saw it in the benchmarks. It's also got DLSS exclusivity, well, at least NVIDIA wise, uh, over the AMD cards like the 6700 XT. So if you do care about that over FSR, uh, that's worth something, right? As well as it has frame generation, which there's currently no competition against. You've also got the AV1 encoder, not over the 7600, because that has one too, but we're doing mostly a comparison between this and the 6700 XT. There is no AV1 encoder for the 6700 XT, and for content creators, that could be pretty important. So yeah, are those things that I just listed out, all those things worth the $30 to you? Because we said this would be good value, similar FPS per dollar to this at $270. It's not though, it is at $300, $30 more, but I just listed off a bunch of those things that might be worth $30 to you. So if you get $30 or more value from those listed features, then you can look at the 4060 as a good value card, similar to how everyone is looking at the 6700 XT as a good value card. And if you wanna compare it to the 7600 at $250, you just redo the entire exercise. And then you ask yourself, are you willing to pay $50 more because they do have a pretty similar raster performance. But again, you have those different feature sets except for the AV1 encoding on the NVIDIA card. I can't answer that question for you. That's for you to decide. So yeah, um, that's gonna wrap it up for my thoughts on the RTX 4060. Now it's time to hear what you have to say. How much do you think this card should cost? Let me know down in the comments below as well as any other thoughts that you have surrounding it. Uh, but all right, that's gonna be it for me though. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video and found it either helpful or entertaining in one way or another. I wanna thank you all as always for watching and for continuing to support the channel and a big shout out to the channel members as always for the above and beyond support. Be safe out there and I will see you all down in the comments as well as the next stream and or video. Bye. I just hit my mic. <laughs> but yeah, bye bye. I hope it's okay. <laughs> <laughs>